a Rolls-Royce Phantom 5 from the 1960s. I mean, these are icons. They're the most beautiful vehicles in the world. You know, they're sort of monuments to a moment in history. They are objects that carry so much cultural weight. These are cars that were built in an era where sort of beauty was the only real requirement. This is a 1961 Rolls-Royce Phantom 5, coach work by James Young. Uh, and what's special, it's electric. We further the legacies of these most beautiful, beautiful cars. You know, it, it excites us so much. It fills us with so much pride to know that we're providing something that will be seen and enjoyed for so many decades to come. But also, what we're really pleased to see is that we are winning the hearts and minds of that much younger generation. These are people that have made their success. Uh, they've made success fast and early in life. British footballing legend David Beckham is also now converting his Rolls Royce to electric power. He isn't just a fan of the electrified Rolls, but also a shareholder in a company that specializes in converting old Rolls Royces to cleaner machines. Lunas was founded by David Lorenz, who named the company after his daughter. My daughter's four years old, just turned four actually last week, and she sings this song, and I've said it before. She goes, go green, go green, make the planet green. So that generation shift is happening from that younger age, and it's shifting fast now, which is fantastic to see. These are building cars and passenger vehicles and commercial vehicles for future generations, and uh, it's a legacy that I wanted her to have, and also to see these vehicles have a new lease of life. This is what the Rolls-Royce Phantom looked like when it first hit the road in 1961. At Lunas, the first step is to remove the internal combustion engine, then completely dismantle the car. In restoration, you can really see how far we take the cars back. The cars are liberated of their old lives by stripping them down to bare metal before every individual piece is then meticulously restored. When you pull back the paint and you pull back the filler, what lies beneath is sometimes a very ugly story of previous repairs. Then the chassis of the Rolls-Royce is scanned in 3D in order to begin its planning conversion to an electric vehicle on the computer. We take it all the way back and then start rebuilding it from the ground up again. We fully strut the car and uh, it really is a work of art. Meticulous manual labor is of utmost importance here. It is also imperative that the original weight distribution be retained after the components for the electric driver installed, crucial in order for the car to handle optimally. When work on the chassis and body is completed, the car shines in a completely new light. Then in goes the electric motor with a 120 kilowatt hour battery. The interior of each car is completely bespoke. We really mix the you know, elements of it, whether the screens are within the dash, screens that are hidden within the dash. You've got matte finishes on the wood, you've got gloss finishes on the wood, and there's so much specification for the client to enjoy as they build these vehicles. And you've got bonnet louvers, different wheels, spats on the vehicle. And it's really lovely because every one of them is so individual. So you see them throughout the shop and they all look like an individual, unique piece. Depending on your taste, the Lunas designers either restore the interior true to the original, or they redesign it from scratch. And when the converted Rolls Royces leave the factory for the first time, their test drive involves laps on the Silverstone racetrack. Yes, the iconic Formula One circuit is right across the road from the Lunas factory. Here, each car's technical systems are optimized once again and adapted to the vehicle. Finally, the electric classic car gets updated with cutting-edge 21st century tech. 
I've got incredibly efficient modern brakes that make this car a real sort of effortless joy to drive. We update the steering, we update the suspension, so it's a beautifully smooth experience. But I think entirely sort of befitting um, Rolls-Royce's promise, really. Uh, Sir Henry Royce was, of course, a, a famed electrical engineer. Um, and, and you look at what he was trying to achieve with the incredible engine engineering that he instilled into the company over, over its foundations. He wanted silent running. Uh, he wanted a very powerful uh, engine that delivered power very smoothly. And of course, uh, electric power delivers exactly that. In 1906, the Silver Ghost was the first Rolls Royce to hit the streets with a spirit of ecstasy hood ornament leading the way. It heralded the arrival of the most perfect car in Europe. And with that came an elite clientele. It goes without saying that the British monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, also rode a Rolls Royce. So renowned was the brand that Soviet leader Leonid Brezhnev was willing to ride in a car from the enemy camp. Lunas is committed to keeping alive the tradition of British automotive culture. We're an enormously uh, proud British company. We're proud of our heritage here. And of course, you know, British automotive icons, they're known around the world as being incredibly beautiful, incredibly evocative. Although back in 2018, the first car that Lunas electrified wasn't a Rolls Royce, but another British icon, a Jaguar. It was something of a labor of love for Lunas boss, David Lorenz. The first car I ever built was the XK120 fixed head coupe, which was a very similar car to this vehicle. You know, I saw Prince Harry's wedding and the electric E-Type, which, you know, most of the world saw at this point, especially in the UK. On the occasion of their wedding, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle drove an electrified 1968 Jaguar E-Type. I'd already had a love for classics, and I saw the electric E-Type, and I thought, this is incredible. And it started my journey looking into just EV powertrains full stop, to look at vehicles that already exist on this planet, and look how we can put clean air powertrain into vehicles that already exist, rather than build new. The Queen of England doesn't usually use a Rolls Royce as her official car on state visits. That honor falls to Bentleys which is why it seemed natural to begin the process of electrifying this other legendary British auto mark. This is actually a, one of four vehicles in the world. Personally, one of my favorite cars in here. It's a two-door James Young Bentley Coupe. There's four of these in the world, which makes it extremely special. I sourced this car for the client, and uh, it's an incredible piece of history to protect, and it came in very bad condition. And I love that we're protecting something. And given that James Bond has been driving Aston Martins for decades, it's no surprise that Lunas wants to electrify this brand too. Then you have some of the uh, cars that have just come in. Uh, the next Aston Martin DB6, for me, the ultimate Brit British Grand Tour. And uh, if you look at everything in here, obviously, it's Bentleys, Rolls Royces, Aston Martins are the pinnacle British classic. The very essence of classic British motoring, but completely up to date. In this Rolls Royce Phantom, you can cruise through life assured that you're doing the environment little harm. It's carbon neutral with a range of 500 kilometers on a full charge. These are kind of almost part of our national heritage. They're part of the fabric of our, our cultures. And we have to address this issue of sustainability that clearly is of so much interest to future generations to ensure that these cars will be uh, driven and enjoyed for, you know, any more decades to come. We know that younger people are less engaged with cars in, in the way that previous generations were. And, you know, we're really proud to provide an answer for them and, and provide an answer to the long-term preservation of, of these beautiful objects. Every eco-warrior with a pension for classic cars and 700,000 euros in the bank can drive to work in an environmentally friendly Rolls Royce.